from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Best Program and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want a higher level of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 46. In episode 44, we used our knowledge of farm animals to begin our description of a wild animal. We assigned homework, which we'll review later in this episode. In episode 45, we used a cultural point of view to research animals. Before written language, knowledge was passed down through stories, sometimes told around the campfire. Now, some of these stories took the form of folk tales, and many folk tales were about animals. We turned to the folk tale in the last episode. Our good friend Will, who read us a story during our unit on trains and railroads, returned with some friends to deliver a folk tale called How the Chipmunk Got Its Stripes. Following that episode, I tried my own hand at reading a folk tale. Long ago, when the oceans were only half filled with water and just a few stars lit the sky, the birds quarrel loudly among themselves. From sunrise to sundown, the air rang with their squabbles. Birds snatched one another's nests and mixed up the eggs. Some battled over roosts, while others fought tug-of-wars over worms. Their scrapes raised such a whirlwind of dust and feathers that Chickadee was knocked upside down and Wren tumbled from the perch. Wren is that little bird that had the, the feather sticking up at the back. Stop this rumpus, scolded old Mother Owl. She hadn't had a good day's sleep since she'd hatched. Can't, 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 called the crow. Someone must put an end to this squabbling, old Mother Owl continued. Someone must decide where each bird belongs. We need a king. A king, cried Gull. Pass it on. Now, Blue Jay thought that Gull said sing and began to sing, began to whistle. Woodpecker thought he'd heard wing and flew away. Parrot started to swing on a willow branch. Most of the birds paid no attention, for Gull was known to gossip. When Wren cocked his head and wondered who might earn such an honor, a king, old mother owl repeated, a ruler that all will obey. Then I shall be, saying, be the king, said the Skylark. Everyone listens to my sweet voice. He trilled his clear notes over and over. Cree, cree. Wapuli, wapuli, chirped the wren to himself. Now when Skylark had finished, Mockingbird yawned. How dull. My songs are never the same. He mimicked the Skylark's melody, borrowed a bar from Blackbird's tune, and whistled a, a, a measure from Nightingale's too. Show off, scoffed the peacock. I am the one with something worth showing. He strutted before them, fanning his blue and green plumes. Wren ruffled his own white feathers. Heads are better than tails, Raven jeered, since I am so clever. I should be king. You can see the, uh, the peacock here. Respect is what's necessary, hissed Falcon. When I swoop down, everyone trembles. 
Falcon showed his sharp talons. Wren ran inside a hollow log. All the other birds cried, Choose me, 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 me. The racket woke hares and hedgehogs deep in their burrows and frightened the fish in the sea. Hush, hush, hooted old mother owl. Differences between birds don't matter. What's important is what makes us alike. She, she peered about, turning her head from front to back and back to front. Who knows? Now each bird waited for another to answer. Finally, Wren called through a knot hold. Birds can fly. Old Mother Owl nodded. Whoever flies highest and longest shall be king. Now the large birds cheered. Each hoped to win the race and the throne. The small birds protested, but their timid tweeters were not even heard. Look at all these birds. <laughs> so, Wren put his head under his wing to think. Just as the contest began, an idea popped into his mind. Get ready, old Mother Owl declared. Get set, fly. So that's what you see is all those birds flying around. After an hour's flight, little birds tired. After two hours, medium-sized birds wearied. After three hours, even the big birds straggled back to their, their roosts. Buzzard's feathers were frayed. Stork, well, he rested on one leg. Only ostrich and eagle remained in the match. Then, with mighty wing beats, eagle soared high into the air, leaving ostrich below like a shadow. Ostrich sank to the ground and refused to fly ever again, even to this day. Eagle circled around overhead, very high overhead. Suddenly, Robin exclaimed, Eagle lost a feather. No, no, that's not a feather, cried sharp-eyed magpie. It's Wren. Remember that little bird with the feather that stuck up? Not noticed, never missed, Wren had hidden himself among the eagle's long quills for a piggyback ride. But when the eagle folded his wings to glide down, Wren fluttered his own and flew up. He caught a tailwind and disappeared into the clouds. All afternoon, the birds watched for Wren's return. Their necks grew stiff from looking up, and a few, flamingo and crane among them, stretched so far that their necks were never the same again. All night, the birds waited, although only the old owl could see in the darkness. At daybreak, a speck appeared in the sky and floated gently to earth. Who do you think it was, that speck? That was Wren. Thank you, said Wren, bobbing his head, for gathering to greet your king. Wren shouldn't win, Ge Eagle grumbled. He used my wings. He used his brain besides, answered Old Mother Owl. One who can do that deserves to rule. So saying, she blinked and shut her eyes. How can we tell how high Wren flew? Swan asked. Mallard quacked, we couldn't see. Look at my feathers, said Wren, as he hopped before them. His white breast was sooty. His, black, his back was brown and streaked with gray. Dingy feathers aren't royal dress, said the eagle scornfully. They are scorched, Wren replied, from brushing against the sun. The sun? Beaks and bills snap shut. And I looked down on the world and found out a secret, whispered Wren to the circle of birds. Our world is an egg. An egg? Beaks and bills dropped open. The earth egg is so big, said Wren, spreading out his wings, that every bird can sit peacefully upon it. 
There will be no need to shove or squeeze, he promised, if you'll follow my rules. The bird stared at Wren. It was quite enough to hear a feather fall. At last, Old Mother Owl opened one eye and murmured, Why not try? Try, 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 called the crow. One by one, small and large, the birds nodded their heads. Then, long live the king, they all said. Order, order, King Wren commanded, and he set to dividing the birds. Some were to live on land, some on water. Some were to nest beneath bushes, others to build the top cliffs. Snow Goose traveled north while Penguin flew far south. Kiwi and Kookaburra went one way, Toucan and Hummingbird another. A few birds, like Sparrow, flitted everywhere. Wren did not disturb Old Mother Owl, for she was napping. So the owl still dozes while the, uh, still dozes while the other birds sing and is awake when the other birds sleep. In time, when the ocean spilled over with salty water and stars crowded the night sky, peace reigned in the kingdom of the birds. Wren never put on a top hat for a crown or wore a robe with bright feathers. He proudly kept his singed brown jacket. Never again did he venture up very high, preferring to nest near the ground. Yet to this day, Wren carries his tail pointing straight up to the sky so that none will ever forget how he flew to the sun and why he is called the King of Birds. Pretty cool, huh? That concludes segment one of episode 46. We'll be back with segment two after this. Organization that's doing big time restoration of forests and stream banks. Hello, I'm John Letts, producer of Adventures in Education. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. This is segment two of episode 46. In a previous episode, we described a black-tailed deer using the slight resemblance to a dog as a starting point. When we described how a deer was different from the largest dogs, that was our next very important step. Later, we added features of a deer that had nothing to do with comparing it to a dog. We could have used another familiar animal as well. We could have used a cow like this Jersey heifer. This time the familiar animal is larger than a deer. So that will be one of the first things we point out. As we did when we contrasted a deer with a dog, we point out the main ways a deer is different. So we start with a couple of sentences that show the main contrast in size and bulk. Again we use the connecting words similar to and only to show that we're comparing but also contrasting. We use the rule of adding ER to an adjective to make a comparative and the word more before an adjective to achieve the same thing. We also use the words in comparison to in order to communicate the proportion of leg length to body size. Deer are seldom confused with cows because their head is so different. So this is an important distinction to make. Remember, we're using our words to form a picture in the mind of the listener or reader. <clears throat> the head of a deer is different from that of a cow. The overall head is more slender, more of a triangular shape than a cow, and the snout is more narrow and pronounced. Just like when using a dog for comparison, there are those large pointed ears that deer have. In this case, we use the words in proportion to since the head sizes are different. A deer's ears are larger in proportion to the size of its head and they are more pointed on the tips. 
Since we're describing an animal that's named a black-tailed deer, describing the tail and contrasting it with the cow are important distinctions to make. A deer's tail is much shorter than a cow's tail. The tail of a black-tailed deer bushes out as soon as it leaves its rump. The tail is mostly black, but there's a narrow white border and the underside is white. Of course, there are many things we need to add to accurately describe these deer, but we'll move on to our homework now. I just wanted to use another animal other than a dog for comparison with a familiar animal. In episode 44, we went into greater detail in describing a deer. For homework, we had viewers use the same strategies to describe a black bear. Let's view the video clip we saw last time about black bears. Black bears. You want to see one in the wild, yet not on the trail you're hiking. They are North America's most numerous species of bear and the most widely distributed. Found from Alaska to Louisiana, Oregon to Vermont, just their paw print can engender a sense of wonder and caution. Black bears hibernate, but only in certain areas. You may find a sleeping bear in a cave or at the base of an overturned tree. They use very little energy while hibernating, but in warmer climates, black bears skip the winter nap. They stay active all year. This black bear is in Alaska, where it surely hibernated through the harsh winter. It looks like it used all its fat and then some, now munching on some grass after hibernation. Its hunger brought it to the edge of the water, but sight of our boat had it returned to the safety of the forest. These first graders are giving hints so their classmate can guess the animal in the picture behind her head. It's a brown and it's big. Big and brown, good. Jesus. It, it has it's um, a, uh, It has little, little and big. This dance. Big, big paws. Oh, big paws. Good. Angelica, you raise your hand quietly again. It has a lot of fur. Lots of fur. It eats honey. Oh, that's a good hint. Do you have any guesses? Yeah. What? Um, bear. Good. You get a point. From the safety of a boat, I videotaped these bear cubs exploring the coastline in Alaska. Mama bears are notoriously protective of their young, but these cubs were allowed to romp freely. Hey, tell me about the black bears' adaptations. American black bears have flat teeth so they can grind plants. They have um, carved claws so they can um, protect their young and get grab food. They have black fur so they can blend in. American black bear hibernate during the winter. And you know don't forget can... about the bear. And they have and the, the bear. The mouse. Bear, <laughs> the mammal? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you already take that. Hey, the, the bear, bear on the whale. The whale is small. like a huge. It's like a like mm, a huge mammal. Bears can be dangerous, especially when cubs are around. Hi, my name is Melanie Hurtado, and I'm going to say something special of my American black bear. American black bears, in the winter, they hibernate, and it goes up about 31 pounds, and it stays without soil and water. This black bear seems to be stalking these buffalo. A fence separates the bear from the bison. This black bear is about to receive a meal from children attending summer camp at Wildlife Images. They spent the morning assembling food that's healthy for the black bears and several other animals as well at this Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Center. One in there, which is fine. It's okay. just produce. It's right know. there. And I think we had a whole bunch of crumbs somewhere that she said we could have. Um. Black bears are unpredictable. While hiking in the forest of southern Oregon, I've heard and spotted black bears running away from me. 
More often, I've seen the tracks on the trail, the tracks left by the paws of the bears, but the bears, they stayed out of sight. Rarely, bear encounters turn out differently. The most dangerous is when hikers come across a female bear with her cub. The mama bear sees the human as a predator and will suddenly attack. A friend of mine was hiking on a canyon trail along the Rogue River and met a bear when coming around a blind bend in the trail. After a tent standoff, the bear began a charge, but then ran off the trail, leaving my friend a bit shaken. These black bears were taken to wildlife images because they had been traumatized or injured. No longer able to survive in the wild, they are now a part of Wildlife Images Education Program. The summer campers throw the nutritious food safely over the electric fencing to the black bears. Preparing this food has taught them about the nutritional needs of these animals. Bye, beer. That's all for segment two. We'll be back with segment three right after this. Organization that's doing big time restoration of forests and stream banks. Hello, I'm John Lex. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. We're helping intermediate level English learners improve their English. This is segment three of episode 46. We had homework in episode 44 to apply the strategies we learned for describing an animal to describing a black bear. Let's check that homework to have you see how you did. First, I have to point out that everyone's assignments are going to look different from mine and from each other. So when I point out the elements that would enhance a description, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the way you did your description. These are just guidelines, one way to look at a description. You may see some things here that you want to add to your description, or maybe you prefer yours the way you did it the first time. I chose the familiar animal of a dog to begin my comparison. Now you might remember the first time I saw a black bear in the wild was one that was running away from me and at a distance my first reaction was wow that's a pretty big dog so I chose dog for my familiar animal. From a distance a black bear has a resemblance to a large dog yet an adult bear is much larger and bulkier than even the largest dog. Using the transition word yet tells the listener and reader that I'm going to point out some differences. Now my next task is to describe how a black bear is different from a big dog. I point out that the bear is larger and bulkier than the largest dog. I point out the hump on the back of its shoulders and its thick muscular legs. Then I point out some other obvious differences. The forepaws of a black bear are wide and contain curved claws that are suited for climbing. A bear's tail is so small it's barely noticeable. Its rump is wide and muscular. Continuing to point out the differences, I say that a bear's head is almost round when seen from the front with a wide forehead. The ears are small in proportion to the size of its head. They are half ovals pointing upward with well-rounded tips. Where bears most resemble dogs is their snout. It's noticeably more slender than the rest of the head. On black bears the snout is brown with a large black nose on the end. Did you have some of these elements in your bear description? Did you go beyond this description to include color or information about size or weight? Well, if you did, then you're well on your way to describing wild animals. Again, everyone's work is going to be unique. 
The important thing to note is if your description can produce an image in the mind of a listener or reader. If so, you must have done something right. If you fail short, know that we'll have opportunities in the future to describe wild animals, even the one you choose to research. See what you can learn from my description. And so ends segment 3 of episode 46 of Ramping Up Your English. Visit letscreate.org. All episodes of Ramping Up Your English are there, as well as links to the video clips we used in today's program. You can watch Ramping Up Your English on channels 15, 15.1, 15 and 115 on the Ashland Home Network and on channel 182 on Charter Cable in Southern Oregon. Showtimes are 8 a.m. on Mondays and 7.30 p.m. on Thursdays. Now, channels and showtimes will vary in other parts of the country. Contact your local access station to see the schedule in your area. I want to thank Gary Mark Roberts for his video work on the black bear clip featured in today's episode. I'm also grateful to Wildlife Images for allowing me to videotape their bears. Wildlife Images is featured on a recent episode of the RV TV program entitled Adventures in Education. I posted a link on my website if you're interested in seeing more about this wildlife rehabilitation and educational organization. It's also available on archive.org on that site. I have to thank, or I don't have to, I want to thank my director, Denise Ross, and my talented crew, and my listeners and viewers. I want to thank all of you. All of you helped to make this program an award winner. Join us next time for Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RVTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.